Thank you so much all for joining our webinar today. This is a dedicated webinar for partners and prospects on how our forecasting AI models can help you identify early emerging and unexpected risks and add value to your food safety workflows. We get a lot of questions very often from our partners on how our AI predictive models work, what's the rationale, what's the accuracy behind them. So we thought that we would take this opportunity to uh, dedicate an hour to discuss the rationale behind our forecasting models and how those are reflected on FUDAKAI AI model modules. During this session, we'll focus on three key pillars. What is the approach FUDAKAI follows regarding its forecasting capabilities? What are the benefits and use cases for such technology in food prevention? How can you use our ingredients and hazard predictions dashboards to extract meaningful information uh, for your supply chain? And could we have a tailor-made forecasting model applied to each company's parameters? Finally, how do our partners experience the use of AI forecasting models in their workflows? And with that, I'd like to welcome our speakers, uh, our data team leader and AI expert, Michalis Pavokostadino, who will walk you through our models and rationale. Rebecca Ferrer, who's Senior Manager of Global Food Safety at PepsiCo, responsible for global programs governing food safety culture, hazard analysis, and risk mitigation of ingredients, who will reflect on how our forecasting models have added value to the PepsiCo's workflows. And finally, our data scientist and prediction expert, Kostadinos Pechlivanis, who will lead the Q&A session. During the webinar, feel free to share your questions on the chat and we will collect those and answer them during the live Q&A at the end of the presentations. Please note that the webinar is recorded and the recording will be shared right after uh, the session. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Michalis. Thank you so much. Perfect, Marina. And thank you very much for the, your introduction. Now, in case some of you in the audience do not know who we are, we are Agrino. We are the data and analytics company using AI in order to predict food safety risks. And we're here today to talk about these predictions, how do they work specifically within the context of our software as a service solution, namely FUDAKAI. This is what we will be focusing on today. And before we start, a couple of things behind how do our prediction, predictive analytics work overall. So we're talking about a multi-step process that first starts with the data. So we first need to choose the data which we will use in order to train, test, and validate our AI models. You are seeing plural here on the slide because we are training multiple AI models and are selecting the one that is performing the best in order to apply it at scale. When we're talking about application at scale, we're talking about applying it to all the ingredients and hazards available in our system. As said, though, it all starts with data. Data is the underlying engine that fuels our predictions. And when it comes to FUDAKAI, our data platform has collected and analyzed more than 600 million data records coming from various sources, various places around the world, various regions, and covering many different types of data. You can see a quick overview on this slide. In terms of the actual prediction approaches, what we are using within FUDAKAI are basically two different approaches. One focuses on forecasting techniques. We will cover this when we talk about increasing ingredient and hazard prediction dashboards. And another one has to do with our correlation approaches. We'll talk about this when we, when we discuss our tailor-made prediction dashboard. Regardless of the approach, keep in mind that the, the end game, the goal for each of these approaches, for each of these prediction approaches, has to do with being able to identify what will take place for a specific ingredient, a specific hazard, a specific region or geography, or any combination of them over the next 12 months. We will focus initially on our forecasting techniques, ingredient, ingredient prediction dashboard, the hazard prediction dashboard. In a nutshell, our approach can be analyzed in the following steps. So it all starts with a specific product, ingredient or hazard, for which we are going to perform forecasting techniques based on historical data, time series data, on recalls and border rejections announced by public food safety authorities around the world. We will use this historical data to apply our forecasting techniques and train our AI models. 
and based on their outcomes, we will use this output, what are most accurate models we believe will take place in order to be able to perform a risk assessment in the future for a specific ingredient or a specific hazard. And finally, obviously, when we're talking about dashboards, the end game is to actually showcase in a meaningful way the results of these AI models. Some things that uh, you will encounter throughout this presentation and while using our system is the very core concept of accuracy. So let's spend a moment to discuss how we are calculating the accuracy within our system. So when it comes to training a new AI model, the actual training will take place twice. First, we will train our models by extracting from the data set the past 12 months of data. We'll train our model and it will attempt to predict what has already taken place. Comparing what our models believe has already taken place and what has already was actually taken place, we are using this metric, these two numbers, to calculate the accuracy. And if it's accurate enough, then we add the missing data back into the data set, retrain our model in order to move 12 months into the future. From a data point of view, keep in mind that whenever you go into any of our prediction dashboard, whether it's an ingredient prediction dashboard or a hazard prediction dashboard, there are roughly 2.4 thousand different models that are trained in order for the actual dashboard outcomes to be presented. Having said all that, let's go and dive into our ingredient prediction dashboard. Keep in mind, this is a forecasting attempt utilizing historical incidents, food recalls and border injections of the past, to perform a predictions in the future, forecasts in the future over the next 12 months or perform risk assessment in the future. So what is there? First up, there is a dedicated block that based on its users' customizations, one can actually quickly identify out of all of the ingredients in their supply chain, which or products, which are the ones that are expected to have an increasing tendency. Basically, what, which are the, the products or ingredients that are expected to have more recalls over the next 12 months. And of course, one can dive in deeper. So we can select, as we said, the ingredient prediction dashboard is a dashboard that takes as a starting point a specific ingredient or product and perform a deeper analysis further down. By selecting a specific ingredient or product, one can quickly identify what are most accurate models believe will take place over the next 12 months. And if we compare this number to what has actually taken place over the past 12 months, we are able to calculate the tendency. And this is how we're, ha we're highlighting products and ingredients that are expected to have an increasing or decreasing tendency based on our model's outcomes. For those of you familiar with our prediction dashboards, you know that we do this on a monthly and weekly basis. And you can perform this deeper analysis based on, based on this. So you can study the monthly di distribution of forecasting incidents highlighted here with the red dotted line and identify which is the month or months where you should be expecting most of the incidents concerning this specific product or ingredient. But also, something very interesting is that we're also showcasing the validation period highlighted here with a yellow dotted line. These are what our models we launched our ingredient prediction dashboard back in September 2021. And we're showcasing in this yellow dotted line what our models believed back then will take place in the future. So you can see this validation period and identify cases where our model did pretty good but also cases where our model was not able to perform accurately enough. Apart from that, as we said, we have more than 600, 000, eh, 600 million data records at our disposal. And these are analyzed also on a geography level. So we know which are the incidents, the recalls and border ejections for foods and vegetables, where did they originate from? Using this data, we are able to perform ingredient prediction, but for a specific geography or a specific country. And you will be able to identify quickly which are the countries of origin for fruits and vegetables that are likely to be affected the most as opposed to others. Same thing you can do with hazards. We're still talking about ingredient prediction and specifically for fruits and vegetables. There is a dedicated block 
in our dashboard that identifies emerging hazards. Let's take a moment to, to talk about what are emerging hazards for us. Emerging hazards are something very new, unknown hazards, hazards that have taken place for this, for this specific ingredient, fruits and vegetables in this case, for the first time over the past month, but never before as compared to the roughly 40 years of data that we have. This is what emerging hazard is, and you will see this highlighted as new in our dashboard. But we also do this kind of forecasting techniques for specific hazards. So out of all of the hazards that have taken place for fruits and vegetables, we are training our, mod our models on each of these time series and are highlighting here the hazard or hazards that are expected to have an increasing tendency of incidents over the next 12 months, as opposed to the 12 months before. And you can quickly identify them using the dedicated block in our dashboard. Using this data, we are able to perform risk assessment in the future. And talking about risk assessment, let's spend a moment to discuss what is Fudakai's risk assessment formula. You can see this highlighted up top in the slide. It takes as input three different parameters, but let's for now focus on the last one, saying probability. The probability basically is how often does a specific hazard take place for a specific ingredient or product category. And using what our most accurate models believe will take place in the future for a specific ingredient and specific hazard, we are using these numbers to perform, to apply our risk, Fudakai's risk assessment formula into the future and be able to do this in a forecasting way. How is this uh, visualized within our dashboard? First of all, you can get, a, you can see a quick snapshot of the risk assessment, of the predicted risk assessment for every hazard that has taken place uh, for fruits and vegetables. This is one thing. And the other one is that, as we said, we do this on a monthly basis. So you can also study the risk evolution for a specific product category and specific hazard over the next 12 months. And this pretty much covers our approach as far as ingredient predictions go. Some things to keep in mind uh, based on the slides that we've already seen is that we're talking about a forecasting technique using as input data coming from incidents, food recalls and water rejection, historical food recalls and water rejections over the years for a specific ingredient. The analysis, the forecasting can take place on either a monthly interval or on a weekly interval. And of course, based on this data, you can dive in deeper either on a specific hazard or a specific uh, geography that is of interest to you, where you may be sourcing your ingredients. And again, keep in mind at any point that the ingredient prediction dashboard is focused, has as a starting point, the ingredients and products available within Food Agai. Based Finally, based on our uh, model's outcomes, we're able to perform risk assessment in the future using what our models believe will take place over the next 12 months. And that's it about ingredient predictions. Let's switch our attention to our hazard prediction dashboard. As you will see in the slides to come, we're talking about a very similar approach. Again, this is a forecasting technique using historical data coming out of recall and border injection announcements. However, the, the main difference here is that we are using a specific hazard or hazard category as a starting point. So you can also investigate what are the hazards that are expected to have an increase over the next 12 months or which are the products that are likely to be affected by a specific hazard over the next period of time. The analysis is very, very similar. So first up, you can identify what our model's outcomes are for a specific hazard or hazard category. In the examples to follow, we have selected the chemical hazard as an example. And you see here, what are most accurate models believe will take place for chemical recalls and border rejections over the next 12 months? And if we compare this number to the 12 months before, we're able to calculate the respective tendency. And again, similar to the approach uh, that we follow for ingredient predictions, we do this on a monthly basis. Highlighted here with the um, a red dotted line, you see the monthly distribution of forecasted incidents for chemical hazards. So what do our most accurate models believe will take place on a monthly basis over the next 12 months 
for chemical hazard. And you can identify peaks or low points easily. And again, keep in mind that you can also use the validation period. We launched our uh, hazard prediction on our hazard prediction dashboard back, I think, in June 2022. And you can see what our models believe back then will take place for chemical hazards compared with what actually took place, this blue line here, and evaluate the results yourself. Similarly to what we do in our ingredient prediction dashboard, you can also dive in deeper on a specific geography or region. In order, and you can see this on the chart on the left, in order for this to take place, we are training our models specifically for data coming out of these regions and chemical hazards in this case. So you can quickly identify a stronger red color means more cases, lighter red means less, all of them based on our most accurate models outcomes. Another interesting thing on our hazard prediction dashboard is the outbreak block. This is one of the two places within Futakai where you, where you can encounter outbreak data. There is a dedicated block within our hazard prediction dashboard that outlines the showcases, chemical related outbreaks announced worldwide. And you can either study them in detail, study the counters, of the counters that have been affected by this outbreak or see the daily distribution of them. Apart from that, and similarly to what we're doing in our ingredient prediction dashboard, you can identify increasing and emerging cases for specific products. So first up, let's start with the increasing, with increasing cases. So out of all of the products that have been affected by chemical hazards, which are the ones that our models believe will showcase an increase in terms of tendency over the next 12 months? You can see them highlighted in a dedicated block Again, uh, we're saying here that tendency is based on what our most accurate models believe will take place over the next 12 months. And we're comparing this number to what actually took place 12 months ago. Comparing these numbers, here you will see identified the ones that are having an increasing tendency. And I'm sure some of you have already guessed it. The next block is dedicated on uh, products and ingredients that have been affected by chemical hazards for the first time ever over the past month, as opposed to the roughly 40 years of data that we have. There is a dedicated block for that, and you will see this, you will see this in your dashboards that it's highlighted with the new keyword here. Before we move on to our tailor-made approach, let's spend a moment to, to discuss what we've seen so far for the hazard prediction dashboard. Again, we're stressing out here that we are talking about a forecasting technique. We are using time series data, historical incidents about the rejections for a specific hazard. And even though it's a similar approach to ingredient prediction, to our ingredient prediction dashboard, this, the, the main difference is that the starting point is a hazard category or a specific hazard. The rest of the analysis is pretty similar, so you can perform a deeper geographic analysis on the predicted incidents for a hazard, identify any products that have been affected for the first time, and so on. And keep in mind, again, that this is a place where you can also see an outbreak data for a specific hazard. And this pretty much covers our forecasting techniques as far as Fudakai goes. But this does not conclude the predictive analytics offered by Fudakai. Another dashboard that we have is a tailor-made prediction one, in which the approach is quite different than the forecasting techniques that we're using. Before we dive into the specifics, keep in mind that in here, we're talking about the correlation approach. And by correlation, we mean attempting to identify connections, links between different, ty different types of data. You will see in the slides to come that in order for a tailor-made prediction dashboard to be generated, many more data points, data records, and many different data types, types of data are used in order to generate the final outcome. You will see some differences in terms of risk assessment. The actual formula used by our tailor-made uh, prediction dashboard is different than what's used anywhere else within Fudakai. And it can be applied to a specific use case 
either on a specific product or a specific hazard or a combination of them. As you can see, we have dedicated blocks to identify outliers or emerging cases. And the final thing to keep in mind in everything that we will see in the slides to follow, we're talking about the implementation of a dedicated model per use case. Specifically, what we're about to see in the next slide is the model, the tailor-made model we built for to identify fraud cases happening in beef. As we said at the start, it all starts with data. And indeed, our tailor-made prediction dashboard takes into account many more different types of data. Specifically, in order for the, for the tailor-made dashboard on fraud in beef, in beef to be generated, we are using production data, trade data, price, animal disease, news or media references, and finally, lab tests. You can see them quickly highlighted on the chart on the right. And just a small note here that in order for a tailor-made dashboard to be generated specifically for fraud cases happening in beef, more than 3 million data records were used, combined, correlated, and then fed into our model in order for the final uh, predictions to take place. And as we said, we're talking about a correlation approach. So the first step would be to ingest the data, harmonize them, process them, but then we need to identify relationships in the data. And this is what the correlation step takes care. By correlation, we're talking how strong is the relationship between data types. So for example, if one increases, what does another data type do? Does it decrease as well? Does it decrease? And we have, for instance, a specific example here, you can see the tailor-made um, case example, correlation example here. And for instance, you can see that the correlation between trade and price shows an inverse correlation, meaning that if more trade takes place, then the price is lowered and the other way around. Whereas as the production increases, so does the trade. Important thing to keep in mind is that this is the second step to our tailor-made prediction approach, attempting to identify hidden relationships between the data. And now let's move on to the risk assessment that we follow. As we said in the introductory slide for tailor-made prediction dashboard, is that the risk assessment formula we're using here is a bit different than what we are using anywhere else within Fudakai. As you can see, the actual formula is highlighted here on the slide. You will see you will uh, see two different things that are of interest. First up, the actual risk assessment formula does not take into account at all incidents. So incidents for uh, for the, the risk assessment within our tailor-made approach is a variable that does not affect the risk at all. And this is what we're trying to showcase, and you will see this in a later slide. We're trying to identify relationships between the risk assessment as calculated by our tailor-made prediction approach, vs what actually took place, which is the incidents. This is one thing to keep in mind. The other one is that this custom risk assessment formula takes into account changes in data, so outliers and out of the ordinary behavior. How does it actually work? We have historical data at our disposal for any of the parameters any of the drivers that we're using in order to perform the tailor-made predictions. So we have historical data, and based on the historical data, for each one of them, we're training, training a different forecasting model in order to be able to move 12 months into the future and forecast what the value, what the behavior for each of these drivers will be over the next 12 months. Having this, all this data at our disposal, then we are executing uh, the tailor-made the tailor-made prediction dashboard risk formula in order to assess what's the actual risk assessment on each point in time. In terms of validation, it's a bit different than what we are using in our ingredient and hazard prediction dashboards. And in order to validate the outcomes of this tailor-made model, we are using known outbreaks. Specifically, in this case, we have highlighted for fraud in beef, we have highlighted the horsemeat scandal. And you can see at the lower, at the left side of your screen, the validation period we're using here. 
the interesting thing is that an increase in the risk assessment as calculated by a tailor-made prediction approach was able to identify roughly a year earlier the actual outbreak. And this is something very interesting because as we said, incidents are a variable that does not affect the risk at all directly. Apart from that, of course, uh, there are dedicated places where we have emerging risks. And by emerging risks, in the case for tailor-made predictions, we're talking about outliers or something out of the ordinary taking place. On the right of your screen, you will see an actual screenshot taken just a couple of days ago from our system, where specifically for fraud cases in beef, our models believe there is a high risk for the presence of veterinary medicinal residues for beef originating in Uruguay, expected to take place during April. And finally, a demonstration on how does a risk assessment, as we do this within a tailor-made prediction approach, how does it compare with what actually took place, our incidents? You can see this chart on the right that showcases with red the evolution of risk assessment based on this approach that we described. With orange, you are seeing the incident trend line. And the interesting thing here is that, as you can see, in many cases, the increase in risk is observed six to 12 months earlier than what actually took place in terms of incidents. So in the case of this tailor-made approach for fraud happening in beef, the model was quite accurate enough to be able to predict what will take place and identify these changes in risk almost a year before something actually took place. And there are various places as you can see this happening in this chart. And now, as we wrap up our tailor-made prediction dashboard approach, what we are using and what you have to keep in mind is that it's a different approach as opposed to our ingredient or hazard prediction dashboard. It's a correlation approach that uses many more data other than incidents. We're talking about correlation, so there is this step of correlating the data to one another, identifying these relationships that we talk about. We're applying a specific risk assessment formula different than Fudakai, so the risk assessment is performed in a custom way. In terms of success cases and validations, there, at many points in time, it was able to identify outbreaks almost a half or a complete year before they actually took place. However, you need to keep in mind that in order for this to be implemented, apart from the actual tech knowledge involved in this and the dedicated work training and developing this model, there is also domain expertise required in order to identify which are the data that are most likely to play a, a factor, to play, an, to play an important role in identifying early on these changes in risk. And with that in mind, I think enough about us. Time to hear for, uh, from Rebecca Ferrer, Senior Manager of Global Food Safety at PepsiCo. What's their use case in using predictive analytics in their line of work? Thank you, Mihalis. I thoroughly enjoyed listening to your um, presentation, your part of the presentation, because it affirms for me yet again how uh, Agrino continues to be at the forefront of using data science to really help us in this food safety area. Um, what I'd like to talk to the uh, group today about is how PepsiCo is using Agrino for a few use cases. Um, one, to support our food safety intelligence surveillance, uh, two, to help us understand how we can better improve our starter hazard assessment for ingredients and commodities, and, and how we can specifically um, enrich the uh, hazard analysis for specific ingredients um, using the information that we get in Foodakai. Um, but first, let me give a little background about PepsiCo because um, while I feel the uh, company is large enough, um, what you may not realize is how large we really are. And this is why 
having a tool like Avino is so helpful for us. So all, each day there are over a billion occasions where uh, consumers are enjoying PepsiCo products in over 200 countries and territories. In our value chain, we work with over 6,000 suppliers and we have to, uh, we procure, manage and use over 15,000 different ingredients. And so looking at a global food safety function from the perspective of a global food safety function, we understand that we play a really important part in what PepsiCo is trying to do to create a positive value chain. So our mission is to create more smiles with every sip and every bite. And at a billion um, opportunities per day, we really need to maintain the trust of our consumers. So food safety is very integral to PepsiCo's code of conduct. We need to understand what, what hazards um, are present in our starting material, and the material that we use to make the products that our consumers love. So um, first, first I'll talk about our food safety intelligence process. So we have associates in each sector um, who are continuously serve, doing the monitoring and response to food safety risks. We go into um, several tools, including Foodikai, to understand what incidents have occurred. And we use some of those um, predictive models to, to anticipate what is coming ahead. We really need to be in a proactive um, stance when it comes to managing food safety risks. Our partners, our, um, our stakeholders are relying on us to identify what's, on, what's coming ahead in terms of uh, food hazards. Um, what is it that we can do? Do we need to take action within our supply chain? Do we need to communicate to our suppliers about emerging risks? Do we need to um, do additional surveillance testing? All of these things um, are really important um, and we rely on the, uh, the, the data, the insights that we get through our food safety intelligence process. So, and when there is a um, severe action that needs to be taken, we're able to respond to that very quickly because we have our internal teams in place um, who are working with their cross-functional partners to ensure the necessary steps um, occur. With our um, large ingredient base too, um, it would be a monumental task if each of our food safety and compliance um, experts would have to review each and every single ingredient basis, ingredient and conduct a hazard analysis. Um, I think in, in a historical context, this would have been done uh, in our company and other companies by researching lots of different um, portal sites, um, scientific references, um, scientific literature, and Agrino um, is able to condense all of this into the Fudokai platform. Um, so we have a process by which we have a starter hazard analysis in place for different types of ingredients, different types of commodities. Um, but we want to make sure in this ever-changing world that that starter assessment is continuously updated, that it's kept dynamic. What we know today isn't necessarily what we're going to know tomorrow, and that information has to be kept up to date. So to support that food safe, that um, initial um, hazard assessment, we are collecting and reviewing 
the um, hazard data that we, you, we see through Agrino um, on a continuous basis. Um, and then specifically for ingredients, um, our starter hazard analysis um, can do um, so much, but we know that particularly for chemical hazards, there are, um, uh, there are incidents that are specific to a region, specific to a geography. And where we really appreciate to the partnership with Agrino is that as a global supplier, as a global procurer of um, foods, uh, a lot of the uh, commonly used data sources do tend to be North America centric and Europe centric, but we challenged our Agrino um, associates to see what other databases, what other sources of data could we get from our um, from countries in Asia and Africa and Latin America to make sure that we really have as much of a global and holistic approach to um, our ingredient hazard analysis. So by doing um, and by, by incorporating those additional um, sources of data, we have a um, uh, more comprehensive um, perspective of what's going on in our uh, supply chain. Um, so all in all, I think, um, you know, having this better data does lead us to be in a position of better food safety and better compliance. And so that is, um, th those are a couple of the key use cases in how we use Foodikai and the services from Agrino. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. And thank you, Michalis, both for your presentation and for sharing the use case. Uh, we do have some questions, so I think we should dive into those. And Michalis and Kostadinos will help us with those. And also please feel free to share any questions you have on the Q&A uh, and we'll make sure to respond to them. So to start, uh, the first question is, in which uh, case should we choose a tailor-made model comparing, to, comparing with the global ingredient and hazard predictions? Hmm. Okay, Martina, thank you very much for the question to whoever posed it. Now it's an interesting one because at least in my mind, but Rebecca or Kostadinos, please feel free to chip in. At least in my mind, it's not that having one cancels the use of the other. I think the scope for each one of our prediction dashboards covers a different scope. So for instance, with our global prediction dashboards, ingredient that hazard, you can quickly identify based on past trend or seasonality, what is expected to take place for a specific hazard or a specific ingredient on geography, or country or for your interest. The tailor-made approach though, goes to, to add on top of that other kinds of data because our global prediction dashboards only take into account historical incidents. Our tailor-made approach can take into account different kinds of data, correlate them together and be able to signify changes in risk or expected behavior earlier on. So at least in my mind, it's not about using one or the other, it's about knowing when to use one or the other. Excellent, thank you, Michalis. Um, the next one is, uh, do we include new testing methods or technologies in the variables that help us develop and improve the model's algorithm over time? Hmm. That's an interesting question. And I'm not sure I fully understand this, but in case it has to do with actual technology, so AI methods out there, the quick answer is yes. Our data science team led by Konstantinos is constantly looking in incorporating the newest technology out there, test it with our data and make sure that what's available in Fudaka and its dashboards, make sure that it stays uh, up to date with the latest advancements in technology and AI generally. However, if the question has to do with technologies in the sector of food safety, so let's say that the new analytical method is, is found and tested on specific ingredients. This is something that could potentially be caught by our tailor-made approach, 
that uses more kinds of data. Let me give an example. A kind of data, a data set used in a tailor-made prediction approach could be literature review, for instance, where these bleeding edge technologies are announced and then incorporating them with other historical data, correlating them together, we'd be able to perform predictions in the future. Great. Uh, another question here is more of a request. It would be useful to see how the predictions are tested or performed to develop a level of confidence. What mm -hmm. type of... St mm -hmm. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, please. If there was another part of the question, it's Marina. Yes, and there was one more. What kind of statistic scientific model you use for predictions? Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess that this refers to our global prediction dashboard. So we create a prediction dashboard that has a prediction dashboard. Uh, the way that we're validating our data, it was covered in the slide that talked about the accuracy, perhaps we can we go back there just to also demonstrate this as well. So the way that we're calculating the accuracy is by training our model twice. The first time the model does not know what has happened over the past 12 months and attempts to predict what took place. Comparing the two values between one another, we're able to calculate the accuracy. And then adding the data back into the mix, we're retraining our model in order to move 12 months into the future. This is how we're calculating the accuracy. The actual validation uh, can be seen wherever you encounter these yellow dotted lines. This is the validation period, and you can perform the validation yourself using our tool. And uh, the last part of the question had to do with the statistical methods or models, I think, specifically. Uh, what we're currently using is um, a forecasting uh, model developed by Facebook, Profit more specifically. And in the next month, we will incorporate also an LSTM as well. Great, thank you. Uh, and one last question we have here is, as the algorithm develops and considers new variables, uh, how can they be informed about the model's updates and improvements? Mm. Yeah, so the way one can be informed for the outcomes of our models actually in is in various ways. The, the obvious solution would be to log into our system once a day, go through each of our dashboards, and quickly identify what are the peaks of data, what are the new hazards or the emerging hazards or the increasing and so on. So one way would be logging into our system and going through the specific blocks in our dashboards that are highlighting these changes. This is one way. The other one is through our weekly insights email, is how we call them. And these are, in, these are emails that are done once a week, that are sent out once a week, highlighting the major outcomes, outliers of data we, um, we saw using the past weeks of data. So basically, either logging into our system, whatever these increasing or emerging risks exist, or through our email, through the email alerts that you receive using food account. Perfect. And I think there was one more. Uh, if you can go back to the graphs with the predicted values and the past predicted values and explain the difference between them. Of course. I think this, for instance, refers to this one. Basically, there are two places where you can see this kind of graphs in our system in the ingredient prediction dashboard. In the hazard prediction dashboard, the moment you select the specific ingredient or hazard, a similar chart will be generated. This chart contains three different lines. So blue line, historical incidents. What took place over the past years for chemical hazards in this case? Yellow dotted line, what our models believed back in the past will take place in this specific period of time. As we said during the presentation, we launched, for instance, our hazard prediction dashboard back in June 2022. And ever since June 2022 up until today, it's been performing these forecasts. And you can see the actual forecasted values over the months, the historical forecasted values over the months, appearing in this yellow dotted line. 
And this is what we call the validation period. So comparing between the blue line and the yellow dotted one, you can actually assess the validation yourself, see places in time where our model did pretty good, but also cases in time where our model was not accurate enough. This is as far as historical assessment and validation goes. And finally, the last part of the chart, the last line in this chart that you will see, is this red dotted line that shows the predicted, the expected, the forecasted incidents for chemical hazards. You can use them to identify peaks in time or lower points in time over the next 12 months, so always over the next 12 months. And one more we have here. How do you select the drivers in the tailored made predictions? Okay, excellent question, actually. And this, first of all, the first part in order to generate the data that are likely to have an effect in this tailor made approach would be through domain expertise. So, the first step that we do when we're about to launch a new tailor made prediction dashboard is sit with experts, companies that are of interest to this tailor-made prediction dashboard, discuss together what are the data types that are most likely to play an effect in this tailor-made prediction approach. After identifying the data, this is where the second step in our tailor-made prediction approach go, uh, takes place, the correlation step. And this is where actually mathematically, we're able to calculate how strong does one data type correlate with another. So, for instance, disease cases or disease deaths have a very strong correlation. You can see this in these numbers here, very strong red. Whereas other data types may not correlate that strongly. So, basically, to identify important data types in our tailor made prediction approach is a two step process. First, with domain expertise knowledge, identify potential data types that may be of interest. And then, using the mathematical approach of correlation, identify which are the ones that are actually showing. A strong correlation between one another, strong relationship between one another. Thank you. And with that, we'll conclude our QA. Thank you so much uh, to our speakers and for the presentation and for the QA. And thank you all for joining today the webinar. We hope you had a chance to get a better understanding of our AI models and the value they could bring to your organization. I just want you to keep in mind that following the webinar, you will receive a separate email with the recording of the session. Uh, you also receive an email with a two minute survey that would really like your input on. If you have the time, we would really appreciate it. And finally, uh, on the same email, you also have a link where you can request a four week free trial of any of the predictive uh, dashboards that might be of interest to you. Um, and you can try them out. Thank you all for joining. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, everyone.